Welcome back. Interesting times three weeks in. The vice president is mad at the national security advisor. The secretary of state is miffed after coming out on the losing end of a White House power play. And accounts of the inner workings of the Trump West Wing often sound like a mix of House of Cards and Game of Thrones. For the record, though, the House Bannon and House Priebus say talk of a staff war is a media fantasy. Listen to this from New York Magazine. Steve Bannon says, I'm quite aggressive. And Reince is a calming influence on, hey, bang, bang, here's how we ought to think about doing that. Priebus then says, we talk a lot, pretty much all day long, and then we communicate at night. Steve Bannon, a little more banter here, until we fall asleep. <laughs> um, so quick, quickly on this one. Uh, you're, laughing at the you're laughing at the table. Smart on their part. There's all these stories, the yeah. all these stories yeah, out yeah, there yeah, about you these. Hang up. No, you hang yeah. up. <laughs> these, these, there's all these stories out about these two guys walking around the West Wing with, you know, essentially in a knife fight, and they're they at least do an interview to say, all is fine. Which one is country and which one is a little bit rock and roll? <laughs> uh, nothing says... Uh, I can answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> you probably... Primus Bannon. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> nothing says unity more than planted stories, not planted stories. Nothing says unity more saying than stories saying right. that there's unity, right? I mean, here's the thing. Does Trump mind all this? Right. right. I mean, yeah. I don't necessarily think that he does. As you can see, even with him... He loves it. He loves it. He had it during yeah. the campaign. He does Controlled chaos. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. But he doesn't mind. He lives that. off feuds. I mean, I mean, look, he's happier to live in the world of feuds and controversy than he is litigating the but, policy details but, of the Gang of Aid immigration bill but, or the North Korean provocation or what have you. Um, but look, White House is due to, this is not just Trump, by the way. I can recall vividly, Glenn and I talked last week about this, in the spring of 2009, getting sure. a, a call from a staffer to then White House ch uh, Chief of Staff, Rahm Emanuel, saying, hey, I've got a good pitch for you that nobody else is really getting this angle. Rahm is actually getting along really well with Valerie <laughs> <Jerry. laughs> <laughs> And everybody's talking about this oh, controversy, God. but the real story is that they're actually hanging out a lot. Oh, I, God. And on background, I can tell you, they had dinner last night together. Okay, you yeah. know. Front page yeah. stuff, right? Right, exactly. Right, right. Right. So, but this is the Yahtzee. We'll, we'll, watch, this how, we'll, Trump, we'll yeah. watch how this sorts out. Bannon, obviously, is very aggressive. He's more nationalist. He's trying to push, seize the moment, do things as fast as possible. Reince is more establishment. Let's work with the Congress. Let's move toward the middle of the Republican Party. The one that is front and center that I think is still sort of crackling with tension, though, is I'm told the vice president was furious. He went out on national television after talking to the national security advisor and said that in these calls that M Michael Flynn had with the Russian ambassador in the transition period, so President Obama is still in office, he was assured that the idea of sanctions and the whole debate about whether the United States would leave sanctions in place once Mr. Trump became president was not discussed. Mike Pence went on national television was unequivocal. Yeah. So there was no conversation about this. Now it turns out on those intercepts, there is some talk of sanctions. There is some talk, the talk of sanctions, uh, people corroborating uh, that, and uh, Flynn, of course, now saying he can't quite uh, remember uh, these conversations. Uh, Mike Pence uh, couldn't have been clearer in, in no. his statement. Uh, Priebus couldn't have been clearer in that no. statement either. Uh, so, so you have a situation now where either Michael Flynn uh, told a fib, an untruth, or he can't remember conversations. Th this that happened trial, just recently. Th this trial goes to a jury of one, though. Yeah. The president of the United States. Yeah. Is if the vice president goes to the president and say, "This is my credibility that this man has undermined." Wait what a happens? second. Shouldn't this go to? Uh, shouldn't this go before uh, a, a committee of 535? We had Jason Chaffetz holding hearings, uh, endless hearings into. And I'm, uh, I'm not questioning the fact that he should have investigated what occurred at Benghazi, but we now have on the record really significant dissonances in, in an account that is important to national security. And as we saw at one of his town halls in Utah, he was chased off off the right. stage. Do your job. That's the yeah. oversight. Right. right. To both Obamacare and So this and is going to ultimately going to ratchet up pressure on the Congress. I don't know how many more of these you can have before the Congress is actually, Republicans in the Congress are going to face some pressure to actually. There are investigations them. underway. The Senate Intelligence Committee and the other investigations on the Capitol. My question is, does the president wait? Yeah. Does he, if, if those investigations are going to lead to something damning about the National Security Advisor, does he wait or does he try to get out yeah, ahead I mean, of it? I mean, I think the thing about Trump is despite his you're fired tagline, he doesn't necessarily like to fire so people, true. right? Yes. Um, so we'll have to see. I mean, Flynn has been loyal to him. They're, they've been good friends on the campaign trail, so it's hard to see him doing that. It's almost like the chaos of everything. They don't want more chaos. And he doesn't like Flynn. capitulation either. But, I mean, but, remember yeah. the Corey Lewandowski yeah. right, example? Right. He waited of, weeks. But, but real fast, this yeah. is a good test for Mike Pence, perhaps his first real big test. How much does he privately with the president try to sort of impose his will um, after being put in a really bad spot here. Yeah. Uh, before we go to break, a lot of serious stuff here. Before we go to break, uh, one of the people at the table here has uh, become a regular <laughs> on Saturday Night Live. Let's take a quick peek here. Oh, gosh. Glenn Thrive.
trash New York Times. Stupid hat, go! Look, I just wanted to know what the president intends to do now that the appeals court denied your request to stop the travel ban. <sighs> You're testing me, big guy. Uh, look, it's simple. If the appeals court won't do what's right, President Trump will see them in court, specifically the people's court. That isn't real. <laughs> you have the floor, sir. That isn't real. <laughs> Good for the kids, right? I, I, my kids, my kids love it. And I have to say, I have never worn the hat in the in the briefing room. Never worn that. But in he the used room. to wear yeah. the hat all the, the time. The, the hat's in the green room. Yeah. We should put that baby you up on eBay. Yeah. All right, all right, everybody, sit tight. Our reporters share from their notebooks next, including more on the fight over who is the real power center in the West Wing.